lot of confusion in the brotherhood. And uh, it causes us, thank you my brother, it causes us to be able uh, to understand from the book of Acts what the church did. Uh, the time dealing with the actions of great men, men that have accomplished something great. So this book tells us what our game plan should be. We pull out the portions that were on it for the first century and then we apply the rest to ourselves. So uh, the book is it's a pretty good sized book but don't let it be discouraging because with this book is left the blueprint for us to know how to do work in the church. Uh, one of the things is we were able to accomplish uh, when this congregation uh, first began is that we literally follow the book, brethren, on how it should be done. And when you look back at it, it's almost comical when you look back because it flows like the congregation of the Bible, minus the tongue speaking and miraculous power. And so the idea is it's supposed to do that. And But when you first embark on the work, you don't know anything until you get involved with how the people are going to battle for or be against or what have you. But you do know the word of God is able to subdue the spirit of the man. And the thing that blew my mind is you take this information and you also go back and redo a congregation that has been in existence for a very long time. And that's the thing I'm excited about this portion of the message uh, that we're going to deal with because... Uh, this particular topic uh, it deals with actually churches that have been established as well as how to establish them and how it was carried out but the, the, the thing I love about uh, this particular lesson is, is confirming the souls of the saints and exhorting them, confirming them and exhorting them. I want to deal with this word confirm I like to look up uh, the words because of the fact is they can give us a better insight on what we're doing. Uh, there is no guesswork in Christianity brethren uh, unless you choose to guess and you'll create something uh, different. But this particular word confirming G19 G1991 or NT1991 uh, to support further. That is reestablish, confirm, strengthen. And so with this understanding this is what Paul and we're going to do in this particular section of the Bible uh, and it is needed for all congregations but the very same information that causes an individual to lay the foundation of a new work is also the same principles that can work for those works that are existing you have people using statements like can't teach an old dog new trick well none of the saints are dogs you know that are righteous we're not old dogs or new dogs we're saints we love the Lord and we can be taught anything and, and, and all of us can adjust things so look at the 14th chapter and we'll begin to uh, do an expository work on it together. Uh, it says in 14.1 And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude both of Jews and also of the Greeks believed. The thing about this is powerful when you see his brethren. You got two different groups. You got a group of Greeks who have uh, come and gotten used to going to the synagogue possibly as Jews and then you have some Greeks that may have came to hear the message in the synagogue that never had anything to do with Judaism but you have the Jews here who are obviously there because they were a part of Judaism and so they're here now and the understanding is they're going to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ said verse 2 but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles notice where the problem is and made their minds evil affected against the brethren now this is unusual when you see this but the idea is why would two groups come together saying they love the Lord and this group stir up the minds of the Gentiles well see there's a a, a Paul that says, well, hey, we know the Bible. We, we, we're Jews. We're Judaism. We're lovers of Moses. And we follow these things. And these guys know what they're talking about. You bunch of idolaters. You couldn't possibly know what's going on. And can you imagine the Gentiles that have become Jews uh, in spiritual worship unto Moses' law. And now they're here trying to side with Paul and I'm preaching information. But can you imagine the thrust, the same thrust you hear today? Man, y'all just got in this. Y'all know, man, we, this is all in our blood. We are not like you sinners of the Gentiles. Man, we always been with God. And see, there's a push here because it has affected the minds. It said, made their minds evil affected. He said, try to, it was accomplished. Look at verse 3. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony 
unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. This is what we talked about last week. Brethren, don't ever think that the first century saints had something on you. Things were more powerful than or greater. No, brethren. These people see signs and wonders and they still don't want to make themselves attached to the word of God. Verse 4, but the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. And that was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them. Now look at the power of the effect that the evil Jews had. They now have a group that is against the apostles, a mixture of Gentiles and Jews. Can you imagine that? You know, and saints, this is something, you know, like I said, we're going to be timely because we want to make sure we continue in that pattern. But, brethren, can you imagine you got a group of guys who were idolaters and not able to kin themselves to the Lord. And then you flip their mind and they get their rulers and team up with your rulers to discuss a stoning. Of men who are teaching the truth. Brethren, you got to recognize who's behind it. Satan. You got to understand his power, his strength. Satan has a master plan to take souls and destroy them. He will never have a kingdom to rule. He's going to be killed. In a sense of a destructive, over and over rhetorical suffering. He's only got a looseness for a little season. The Bible says it's for a season. And that's it. And he knows his time is short. And he's making his move. He will never have anything. But he'd rather see God without the souls that we possess. That's the truth. Just so he can say we don't belong to the Lord. You're dealing with a creature that is vile and evil that began to tell the very first lie. Out of all the beings that God made, Satan is the father of lies. Now, 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 now that's very powerful brethren. That's something to remember. And I want you to keep that in your mind. Because now you know how he is able uh, to do these things. Look at quickly. Hold your hand now. I want you to look at John chapter 8. We want to make the appropriate emphasis to show. This is why you see different odd looking lies. You got lies that deal with past. Our lives deal with present, lives that will deal with the future. But this demon, Satan, is the father of these things, and he is absolutely no good at all. And so the Lord accuses him of being one of their one of the devil's children in John 8 and 43. Oh, let's look at 42. I want to start with 42. If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God. Neither came out myself, but he sent me. Now these are, remember, these are Jews. That's all they know. All they talk about is God, but, but he's not their father. Verse 43, why do you not understand my speech? This, this scripture, I continue to look at it a lot. Because it's something I have to tell myself. Do you understand the law of speech? Because brethren, you can, you can go left at any minute. And you, you may not even realize when you're going the wrong way. And somebody has to grab you, hey, hey man, you, you're going the wrong way. And even because you cannot hear my word. Now that's the thrust. You cannot hear my word. Cannot. That's powerful. Verse 44. You are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. So don't think these people. If they create an idea of their own. Without the devil's help. Like Jeroboam just about said. He devised it in his heart. It's a powerful thought. He devised it in his heart. Well that's just because I'm acting like my dad now. You know I, I'm doing my thing now. I'm coming up with ideas. You know. And so he says he was a murderer. From the beginning. So here we go. So he's a murderer. Before Cain. That's very important. Cain's the first man. But he's before him. He's a murderer. He's trying to kill and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in it. Now that's very powerful. Brethren of human beings. You're going to find out. Men have a certain percentage of truth in them. Human beings like you and I. No matter how vicious and vile they get. And that's why you have to take the advice. I remember hearing Brother Polk say this one time. But we got, we got to help our brethren. And he's right. Because men have a certain percentage of truth still left in them. If you can tap into that, man, you can get them. The devil has no truth in him. Mm -hmm. Now you know what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You can't get him to be sad about your case. You can't, you can't reach him. 
So you you can have a brother, you can keep going, but you know, your sister, you know, or have you have you forgotten about what the Lord did for you? you it's a certain amount of truth just bad in that little glimmer of hope. With the devil is zero. So he says here, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. That's his sister. Nobody taught him. It's his sister. No other angels they got there. Amen. What can we come up with? No, it's his idea. For he is a liar and the father of it. And he says in verse 45, and this explains. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. This is why. He said, if I told you a lie, you'd run with it. Oh yeah, you'd run with it. Which of you convinced me of sin? Now he gave him opportunity. All I had to do is come up with it. And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God, hear it God's words. You therefore hear them not because you're not of God. Now remember, and we can go back to chapter 14. Now remember, this is Jesus who does not lie. He's not guessing. He knows all things. He understands. And he said, okay, now I'm telling you the truth. Not of my father. Because if you were, you'd hear God's word. Brethren, this is the same pattern of the human beings that you and I have to deal with. Now he's only teaching them because he's hoping that they're gonna it's gonna jog them, they're gonna give up and come back to him. And that message is gonna be preached again on the day of Pentecost. And it's gonna be preached forever. And Jesus is gonna always reach out and say, Okay, you know, you know, what about this? What about that? And then when the death comes on the person, that's it. We've done all we can. This one's scrap, and that's it. But the law, because the law, no, that, that, that was a little glimmer in you. Maybe we can fan it and get it going, put some kindling on it and get it going. But he is going to be the last person that walks off from the scene of trying to rent somebody to the Lord. He's going to come up with every angle he can. And then when he goes, we might as well follow behind him because it's over. So he says uh, in verse uh, number six, they were aware of it. They were aware of it. And fled unto Lystra and Derby, cities of Lyconia, Lyconia, and unto the region that lied round about. And there they preached the gospel. Luke is given a detailed spiritual history, plus he's a spiritual man himself. Um, he is letting us know all the different things. They have an everyday life. This is this area. Like I say, well, area fifth ward, and he went over to the woodlands, you know, just, just regular areas. Mm -hmm. Where people live as human beings there. It's not Mars. It's, it's real life. And so he says in verse 8, And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. Boy, this guy, boy, this is sad. The same had heard or heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Somebody listen. See, he, now he's not like the guy in, in Acts 3. Uh, you know, looking for money. This, this, this man, this guy, he like, he's got faith. Man, I can, I can be healed, man. You know, I heard Paul. I, I, he can, maybe he can heal. I, I, know, I know he can help me. I have faith. He is, will he help him? Said with a loud voice, Paul said to him, Stand on thy feet. And he leaped. And walk. Now you know what? Now you gotta understand. We gotta look at this for a minute, brother. This guy's never walked. Oh, this is a sad story just talking about. It. He's seen everybody else walking. And he's come out of his mother's womb, little kid. She's held him, loved him, family loved him, fed him. Little fella just can't walk. Now he's grown. You know, it's like, my goodness, this is sad. But now here comes a guy preaching about Jesus, talking about Paul. He hears it and he's like, I, I, I believe that. I believe. And he looks at him and says, stand upon that feet. And he leaps up off. Now that's faith. Is that us, brethren? Is that us? Make the application, Ozan. All right. Your congregation, you've been in existence for 40 years. You've only had one evangelist. Mm. And when he leaves, he calls somebody else to preach. Lord, Lord help us, Jesus. Never walked yet. Stand up. On your feet. When you hear information shared about, brother, let us help you. We can help develop the people that can help us to continue to learn. You know, one of the first things we had to do when we started a few years ago was to teach men to teach the Bible. For the purpose that they could teach other men to teach the Bible. So the whole congregation would grow. And we knew already leaders would develop like popcorn on heat. It, it wasn't no man. We hope, we show hope and pray to the Lord somebody develop. I remember one brother said, the leader's going to be from this group here, man. 
I said, Amen. I said, Oh, he got it. He got it. He understand. Teach the word of God. Forgive when men sin. Encourage them to do better. Work with their families. Be out when you can at illnesses. Be out for sad times. Be out for good. One family. Popcorn. Here we go. Leaders. Because it's not a human, it's God's business. With just tools that he's using. Amen. Can you imagine a wrench looking at you crazy? You say, man, you know that you'll know work on this car. I say, that's what I'm designed for. I fixed this car. All you gotta do is turn me and put me in the right spot. That's what we do, brethren. That's all we are, tools. It is God's system of government, his system of teaching. That not only it isn't just to develop, it is, it is to develop the human being to be a faithful saint. He may not want to be no leader. Great. Not to be no leader to go to heaven, but he will be a better person on the earth for others. He can talk to all kind of people that you'll never ever see that'll never set foot in the congregation that you're at, and that's what it's about. And people always think, you know, like man, ain't no leader, but it's not just about it. it's about can the sister not gonna be no leader. So what are we teaching her for? Because she's going to be a better person on the earth. She's going to be holy. She's going to talk to people who will never talk to a man. Never say nothing to a guy. But they'll listen to her. And that's what it's about. And it develops. It's not, I think it will. We know it will. So when they hear the word, should be like this man. Leap up. The saints should leap up. It shouldn't be a fight. Unfortunately, sometimes it is. Shouldn't have to terminate the brother. To get the church to move in the right direction. But sometimes men come out of brother wrong. You know. You're a devil. You want to run a church. You beast from hell. You know. Like, oh, hold on man. Let's, let's try to see. You know. Try to reach and see. You know. Why are you afraid of leaders? Why are you afraid of other men? Why are you afraid of the sisters having a Bible cast? Why are you scared? They're not going to take the church over. They're not Jezebel. They just want to talk about Jesus. Is that okay? Brother. I've heard brother say man. He was going to have a Bible class for a sister. But, you know. Oh, uh, the brother couldn't teach. I said, the brother couldn't teach it. I said, well, I saw I understand he's going to teach for a while to get some sisters going where they can teach. Why would you have to have a brother teaching? They can teach. Man, sisters, they get in class by themselves, brother. I said, brother, what? Are they going to take over heaven or something? I said, what are you talking about? But, you know, my mind didn't click like that. So I'm like, I don't know what he's talking about. And then five to get to that level. So, okay, he's afraid they're going to run the church, which is ridiculous. Why would you get together to talk about Jesus and run the church? So we're going to get the sisters together, and they're going to talk about Jesus, and they're going to run the church. Now you know that, because two, that's like gas and water. That couldn't possibly mix together. Nevertheless, we understand that this man saw and believed. Verse number 10. I mean, verse 11, forgive me. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in a speech of La Carnea. The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Okay, now we got problem two. First problem we have, got an impotent man. Bless his heart, can't walk. He lifts up and you think there'll be joy in the city? We got somebody going left. They want to call them gods. Okay, so then got another problem. This is how the saints do. This is how the world does, brethren. You will have a new problem pop up. I don't know if you've, well, you've worked on something. Maybe you're doing a project for school. You get the wood fixed over here and the, and the metal fall over there. You go, oh man, I don't want to do this. The family have to encourage you, hang in there, don't give up, you can do it. You're working on your car, all of a sudden the water leaking under the bottom, you didn't realize the holes busted too. Right after you got the brakes fixed, oh my goodness. Sometimes people go to the doctor, they had a foot pile fall out, they got a spot on their lungs, want to check that out and they come out to be okay. But boy, everybody nervous. Because this other stuff starts popping up. Because Satan is involved. He's not going to let you have this one problem if he got anything to do with it. So what do they do at this particular point? He says, verse 12, and they call Barnabas Jupiter. Oh boy, they give them God names. False God names. And Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, and when they have done sacrifice to me, man, this guy's been off the chain. He's the priest. He's the one that sit there. God, they've come down. We got to do sacrifice. Amen. So now, this is, this is where you got to really be strong. Because this is like worse than a preacher's anniversary that somebody has surprised on you. You know, it doesn't matter how things go. When something is not right, you have to stop it. For the sake of the souls. Pause this and this. It would have been so easy to say, well look, Barnabas, we're just going to eat. 
I'm kind of relaxed and I just tell them, sirs, we thank you for this, but you know, there's but one God and we appreciate it. No, 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 no. See, this, this thing going to blow up. Watch what happens. Verse 14. Which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their coals and ran in among the people crying out. They got, they got a whole other reaction than what some people have. They tore their coals and ran and cried, hey, hey. Saying, sirs, why do you do these things? We also are men of like passion with these. Men. We like you, man. We have the same thing. We have to watch what we looking at. Watch how we thinking. Watch what we eat and drink so we don't become gluttons or drunkards. Man, we, we have the same susceptible things as you. You can't lift us up this high and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein who in time past suffered all the nations to walk in their own way. So, you know, uh, Brother Henry was telling us about a message he preached this morning about after seeing the poor elderly man get shot and killed uh, by this deranged individual. Such a sorrowful thing. People began to go, why is this happening? Why is the Lord letting things happen? So, like we all do, we talk about relevant subjects, so he taught a message on that. You know, it's, it's God allows a lot of things to develop. Offenses must needs come. But he will judge it at the end. Don't hand join in hand. The wicked not going to go unpunished. They're going to be punished. Don't worry about it. Uh, like Solomon said, the wheels turn slow in the justice of the law, but it, it's, it's going to hit. And when it hit, now it's done. And there's no remedy. So you just have to wait and be patient. Because the Lord knows the poor. He knows who's abusing them. He knows all. That's why Jesus he said, you always have the poor. He knows crooked men are going to always dog out poor people. That's just the way it is. It's just something in the heart. He says even his neighbors don't like him when he's poor. His neighbors despise him. Look at him. He's broke. Probably want to ask for something. I don't know why people are like that. And you have to always guard your mind against that. There's a bunch of broke people asking for something. Here they come. You know, it shouldn't be that way in that, in that instance. So we look at this thought now. This individual Paul has taught God is the one who is over all. The individuals now must accept it because at one time God allowed men to walk in their way. Not that he saved them. But see, we have to understand the system of God, his mentality. We can see his mind because we have the mind of Christ about how he has revealed us. God allowed a lot of things to go on. But now God has drawn the chalk line. You ever seen people draw chalk lines? Say, okay, don't cross it. And he said, okay, look, I'm calling everybody to repent. Amen. Everybody got to change. That's what he did with Nebuchadnezzar. He let Nebuchadnezzar go for a long time. while talking crazy, making God, throwing people in furnaces, acting a fool. And then one day, he said, okay, I'm, I'm sending this boy a message. You know, man, you bothering me. You, you, getting a, you, you in my face too much. He said, simmer down because I gave you what you got. And he didn't respond. And if you listen and you read the story, Daniel pleaded with him. So I beg you, King, listen. Because he, he knew Nebuchadnezzar, you know, you lost, but you know, you cool with me. We can work together. But I'm begging you, man, your, your enemy is going to be happy at this. And then all of a sudden, he started viewing what he had done. He started to praise himself. That I'm not being this by the words in the mouth. <laughs> Speaker come from heaven, cut a loud and clear. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. Time for you to get a whooping, paraphrasing, obviously. Because God is letting him know, if you don't fix something, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to have to kill you immediately. Because I, I can't let you exist talking crazy like you did this yourself. A lot of times, every now and then, you'll see the Lord's hand hit somebody who's really been talking crazy. Sometimes one of these nations where God will say, boy, everybody afraid of him. He's killing thousands of people. Then all of a sudden, somebody blows him up. He's like, they found him dead. He's dead. They hung him on a tree and ripped his body apart and killed his family. Not that that's good, but you know, boy, they got tired. They got tired. And guess who got tired? God. And he let the hammer fall like with hair. Because after a while, you start pressing up too close to the Lord. I hear you. I see you. What are you doing? Get away from me. You better go back and enjoy what I gave you. It's short anyway. You said what? Remember Sennacherib. Oh, your God is not the God everywhere. He's only a God in certain places. And I've destroyed every other God. And when they prayed to the Lord, he said, he's not going to even step foot in the city. Don't worry about it. Had him killed by his own children. See, when God get tired of you, you don't have to be here. Just act crazy enough to get his attention and he'll make a move. Because he is a God of order. Some people know how to enjoy their goods and keep their mouth shut as Gentiles and some don't. And that's where the problem is at. And so therefore he says here that um, verse number 17, nevertheless he left not himself without witness 
and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful season, filling our hearts with food and glad. A lot of times people don't realize that. You know, the story <laughs> went out and about, I remember Brother Hamilton preached this. You, you, you brothers and your sisters also, you're some good Bible teachers. I mean, that's sincere. I love you. I can remember so many of the lessons, just statements you said, even in Bible class. I remember Brother Hamilton taught a lesson about Israel being the female and how she was disrespecting God. And how she was boasting of her oil and stuff she has. And the Lord said, I gave you that stuff. I gave you all that flax. I, I gave you what you, you thinking. Who? And he had to make a move. Because he gave all these wonderful gifts. Well, why does the saint need confirming? Because saints will get beside themselves. They will. Just like these idolaters are, saints will even get besides themselves. If you remember before they got to the land of Israel, you go back and look at Deuteronomy and those books. You pull up the, the beginning chapter when they first got the He for one of them. When you get here, you're going to have nice houses. Can you imagine coming through Houston and, re, and, and God is running everybody out for fear. There's an army coming. He's running everybody out of Houston. And boy, you, 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 you're fighting and you taking sections, fifth ward goes, and then Woodlands goes, and then Humble goes, and then nice house. You see the nice house y'all got? And they run you out. They got your nice house. You got a dog there. And dog kind of come like throwing some meat. He's your dog now. That's your dog now. You got a horse that you had. That's your horse now. Nice house. Yard, lawnmowers. Nice truck. Look at nice truck with wheels on. That's your truck now. He said, when you get this stuff that you did not buy, he said, don't get high minded. Forget who gave it. Say, because that was he said, I must have something telling you. Don't get beside yourself. Remember how you got it. And don't forget me. And they did, just as a holistic nation. That next generation, they acted up. Oh, with God. After that first generation that went in had did all that the Lord had asked. I want to take a minute to tell you, parents, you know, you're gonna to have to quit beating yourselves up. I, I said I'm somewhat hypocritical and have to check myself all the time and say, man, you're always telling people don't beat themselves up and then here you go. You have to watch that because you have done a lot and accomplished a lot as parents, raising children, taking them to church when you're sick, talking to them about the Bible, talking to them and slamming the door in your face. You've been opening this door, you've been listening to me, you know, you want to kick the door in, but you bought the door so you're going to wait. You don't want to tear it up, you know. And you know, man, you have you have worked and labored, and every now and the devil will creep in while you're finna go to bed and say, Well, it looked like you failed as a parent, but that's all right. No, he's a lie. Elbow that devil spirit in the stomach. Get behind me, say I did not fail as a parent. I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm not in jail, they in jail. I'm not on drugs, they on drugs. I'm not a drunkard, they are drunk. You can't beat yourself up, saints. You didn't know anything. What else did you know? Even God has evil children. And that's why you stop and say, okay, because the devil will have you so low. Guess what? You just come to church and say, oh, hey, man. And you leave for you know what? You quit doing work. Now he really got you now, don't you supposed to do? Can't let him get you. Brothers or sisters, you cannot let him get you because he will do that. And we have to understand these people are getting besides themselves just as Israel did after Paul says he gave you all these things to make you happy too. And you want to worship us? The men, he's the same. We didn't give you anything if we told you something was from God. And so he says here in uh, verse number 18, And with these things, boy, this is a word that scares me, scarce restrained they the people, and that they had not done sacrifice on them. After all that good speech, it's bad. They were still, man, I don't know why we can't go on and just do this anyway. I don't know, man. I guess we take the, take the animals back. You know, like they discouraged us. Scarce. I saw a TV show. I think I've told you before. On one of these channels, <laughs> trying to redo this story. Oh, they dis they disrespected God in this story. They had Paul and Barnabas laughing as they was picking him up. Barnabas, we have to stop them like they wasn't gonna do nothing. Now, you know, this is not what the reaction was. The reaction was fierce, torn coals, fear in their heart. These people gonna lose their souls acting a fool with God, disrespecting Him by honoring us. But that's what's wrong with the denomination world when they make these movies. They, they just, for some reason, this book, is, this, this book is like thrown out the window on on, on majority of the movies. And I don't know why we don't make movies. Just look at the book and make a movie like the book say. Don't change the, the plot that the Lord has. So we look at verse 19. It says, And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch. Now this is how evil people do, saints. Just, just remember this. You can go 
and do. You could go right now as a single group or as a family group and go all the way to California and teach the gospel. Being invited to any battles or, you know, do some work. Somebody going to follow you from where you was at doing work. Some kind of way the devil going to do it. And talk trash from Satan against you. If you don't watch it. You'd be like, why would they come all the way? Because they're evil. They're going to come all the way from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been there. They're going to fight. Now he's not, he not even in your city no more. He, he, you should be glad he's gone. But I'm so evil, I'm going to follow him where he's gone. And I'm going to stone him to death. And I'm going to drag him out. We got him. He's gone. It's ridiculous. Look at verse 20. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Now, you know, you know, you have, you have to look at it, brethren. Look at this from a metaphoric uh, thought process. When you see a brother maybe bashed, or sister bashed and beat up bad verbal, verbal assaults hurled, and, 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 and their uh, heart is torn and ripped up. And you know, you count it right, you know, it's gonna be alright. You try, you know, trying to encourage him, looking, you know, like they're not saying too much. And leap up like Paul did and say, let's go back to work, saints. Let's go. Go right back to the heat of the battle. Don't look surprised because remember this verse. This is exactly what Paul does. And you would think he would get up and go, man, look, I am, I'm never going back to that crooked area no more. I'm not, I don't even want to go nowhere near none of them cities we went to before. But this is one of the cities that they went to, as the scriptures talk about before. They already been through Derby in verse 6. So he says, and when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium at the end. Now, do y'all see these names? Have these guys lost their minds? You're going back to the city that people came to whoop you, made a personal visit to catch up to you and stone you, and you're going back there to preach? Because Paul already said, you know, I'm going to give up my life for the gospel. Why? To be somebody? No. To save one more soul. One more soul. Sometimes somebody asks you, why are you still dealing with them? Why are you still talking to them? They not going to listen, baby. Well, they, they made some changes. They said that they were, we studied a few scriptures. Oh, baby, they just playing you for a sucker. They not going to do it. But see, you got to watch that person. Watch it. See, because they're discouraged. And you said they've made some glimpses of changes. They've, they've asked some questions. They you had good dialogue. When had lunch and you prayed together. You know, oh, baby, they, they get the, you going to see what they're okay. It's, it's, it's okay, well, you know, now that's enough. Thank you for your discouragement. You know, let's go ahead on your way and let me continue to be used if such is the case. Let us see. Because Paul understands, I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep working because I'm going to find another person who will accept the Lord for who he is. And so he says here in um, verse uh, number 22, that confirming the souls of the disciples, see, to get them strengthened and exhorting them to continue in the faith. So now remember, they're making a journey. So they, they go through the cities, go through Umbo, go through uh, other places, Corsicana, keep on moving all up through Texas, and you so let's hook back through and go because now we got to <laughs> confirm the souls, strengthen them. And encourage them to remain in the faith. Why? We say, well, that, you know, why we do that? Because saints get weary. Saints get tired. They get tired of getting hit, beat. You didn't see Jesus when they hit him, when they, and they took his robe off and scared him and beat him, and they mocking, bowing down. You didn't hear him go, oh, you bow good. I like that. It, it was discouraging. He's looking at this, so they're going to make fun of me. You understand how Jesus is in a human body thinking. Also in human terms. And he's looking. Now. Even if he's not the son of God. He understands. I've done nothing but good for them. Nothing but good. And they mock me. Why would they do that? And a lot of times an individual may not realize. That Jesus Christ himself. Understood. That 
people can blow your mind, saints, with nonsense. A lot of times we don't understand that the Lord has feelings. He's not a robot, nor is his father. God is not a robot. God can shake bad news off. God can wipe spit in the face off. But don't think it doesn't bother him. Don't think it doesn't bother him. Because Jesus himself acknowledges that these individuals who do not believe and who refuse to accept what he says, it's mind-blowing that they are like that. I mean, it's ridiculous. Look at how he teaches. Jesus and look if you will, uh, Mark chapter 1 and verse 22. He says, the scripture says, And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as a scribe. So it, Jesus' teaching in and of itself was powerful. It was mind-blowing. It, it, it changed the life. Uh, it causes one to rethink of which way he's going. And understand he can go in the right direction. If the person understands what the Lord is trying to do, you would think it would have its effect on their soul. But an individual has to be calm, absorb it in. Jesus said he didn't have the need let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And this is out there. But at some point in time, Jesus looks around and he's astonished at them. At their unbelief. In one area he goes to, it's like, it's astonishing to him. Like, man, they don't, they don't believe this, what I've just done. This power that is seen. Not that it's like he can't figure out. But it's astonishing to see that happen. Sometimes you know things don't happen. But it still it blows your mind. I like to use the movie theory. You watch a movie. You know something to blow up. And you've seen it five times to blow up again. You go, ooh. He didn't know it's going to blow up. But it's still astonishing. Man, how did they put that thing together? It's still astonishing. The law looks at man. These guys have configured their mind so against me. I can do this, pop miracle, and it still doesn't affect them. So all they can do is heal a few sick folk in that particular area. And that's as much as he can do. So they are astonished at him at the greatness. He's astonished at them at their faithlessness. Faithless toward his love toward them. We look back at the 14th chapter and we see of Acts that it says, confirming the souls, verse 22, and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And this comes some bad news, but it's on the plate. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Much tribulation. Got to go through it, brethren. We can make it. I used to go. I, I had, a, had a series of dental, dental visits. I was a good dentist, a good guy when I was younger. Uh, about to get out of high school, so I was going to dentist like almost every two weeks. And boy, when he pulled that drill, I know my this is the part. This is the worst thing in the mm -hmm. world. He put the peppermint on the jaw, numb, and then he hit you with the knee. Uh, it only could do so much. You felt that knee. The deeper it went, the worse it hurt. And, uh -huh. and every week I go, that man, he's going to pull on this. He's coming to the needle again. My goodness. But I still have a teacher this day. Thank the Lord. Most of them are still hanging in now. So he did a good <laughs> job. You know, I'm happy. But. I knew it was when I was in the pain, man. Much tribulation, saints, like that drill. Much tribulation. You see, you here come this brother, here come this sister. And you go, look, they got that look on their face. They finna, they finna blast me. And you're a leader, you've been working hard. It, it was joy, and they come up, just baptized my, it was joy, and come up there. Hey, I want to talk to you about brother, brother so and so. Yeah, okay. And then, you know, yeah, you know, last week we talked about, yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, and I looked at the scriptures, uh, you know, you have to watch you say because I, you're going in the direction of one that would, would die lost. You mean like, brother, now look, we talked about this and see, but you know, but here comes, but here comes the drill, the tribulation. But look at the soul and say, okay, now maybe we can get this one. Maybe we can get him. And he come again. He said, "Man, he come again. He, come again. he got that look on for. He come. Hey, brother, how you doing? Your hug? I'm doing fine. You know, kind of a stiff arm hug. And hey, I want to talk to you a little bit more. We said, oh, hey, you know, ooh, we." But keep on because one day, just maybe, mm. that brother's going to come with a smile. How you doing, brother? And you're not going to be expecting this because you're thinking another drill battle session. He's going to go, brother, I want to thank you.
for battling with me. Because I got it. Me and my wife were looking at it, and she helped me get it too. Man, we're up to three in the morning. Man, I love you, man. Thank you. God bless you. Keep us good work. But you, you got all right. He's kind of spellbound. He's looking for another fight. Amen. Because you got him. Or you got her. Amen. Do you know you will forget all the battle? It just happens like the woman in Trayville. Forget the pain. A baby is safe now in my arms. That's what the battle is. That's what the goal is about. As we wrap up here, he says, verse 23, And when they had ordained them elders in every church and prayed, had prayed, with fasting, they commended them to the Lord of whom they believed. They believed on the law. They commended them. And you know, when you see this, this is a pattern. They go through the city, they preach, come back through, okay, people working. They was now, they in other cities. Would you get a man of the gospel? He got it. <clears throat> Remember Brother Polk said last week, and there was a good Bible study, and now listening uh, 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 last week, Brother Hamilton did an excellent job uh, leading the class. He eventually said, you know, you got to step back. Got to know when to turn a thing and step back. Say, okay, now turn over. There's other men that they got it. They, they, they do it. And these guys in other cities. Now these guys are still teaching, working, teaching, working, teaching, working. And men are developed. And then they come back to the city. Confirm the souls. Exhort. And all they ain't elders. I'm like, they didn't do all of it. Some people think that they were just apostles that day and night. Only in that city. Teaching and continuing. These men develop. Their wives encourage them. They work together. Church family. And now men are developed. And... Okay, God lead us and now commend you all. Here was good work. We're gone because men that have been taught by men teach other men, and they develop. That's all it is. And so he says in verse twenty-four. And after they had passed through out Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Atalia, and they. And thence, forgive me, sail to Antioch, from which they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And there they abode a long time as disciples. Man, this is important. Bro, this is emotional. Praise the Lord. These guys, it's a long journey, man. They're going through all the places. They're telling you, yeah, man, we got here. Man, they stoned Paul. We thought he was dead. What? The, for preaching the gospel? Yeah. Come back and say, but the Gentiles will say, man, the church, we all named leaders now. Oh, man, they're doing good. Say that a long time. You know, let's, let's go to work here. You know, sometimes a person doesn't understand. Yeah, he almost died. He, he felt the pain. But all we're talking about is the joy of the souls that have made it. Because that's forgotten. Brethren, don't ever get discouraged the work you have to put in. Missed family dinners that you, you know, would like to sit down. It's easy to see the phone ring and say, man, I don't want to talk to this person. No, no this is drama city. You know, and uh, but at some point you got to call them back and, and get into the drama. Because the soul is worth it. He's, and so you, you can look at it and say, I don't know it's about. My goodness, I don't know it's about. You know what's your here come the drill. It's coming. Here it goes. Time to battle. But you got to, because that soul is valuable. It's worth more than everything your eyes can see. Physical things on earth. And beyond in every stratosphere that exists. Don't be discouraged. It doesn't matter if the soul doesn't accept it. You have labored. That's the key. You have labored. And that's all that counts. And God will give you reward. Now, the encouragement, the lesson is yours to be encouraged to recognize these men went through a lot. You know, it's bad to see your friend stoned to death. And you think, that's it, man. You know, you know somebody asks you, well, he, if he had died, well, what happened to him, man? He's preaching. He's talking about Jesus. And like I was asking, they stoned to death. What? My God, but why didn't he stop? Uh, he's, this, this is what he wants to do. And we'll like him. They're going to stone y'all too. Well, maybe. He's like, man, these guys are crazy. No. We love the Lord. And we love his children. And we love his creations. Amen. That are yet to be baptized. So if you're here, you're not a member of the church. Or you're listening to the message. Be encouraged to know to 
put Christ on in baptism, one first must recognize he died, he was buried, and on the third day he rose again. You have to embrace that thought and take it deep in and believe it with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And the Lord himself validates it and says, He that believes, Mark 16 and 16, and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. You know, at some point, my brother Gonzalez said, Acadia said, you know, you have to believe what Jesus says. At some point, he don't lie. Everything he says is going to happen. He doesn't lie. And you have to go blindly into Sometimes we believe in people. Sometimes people say, I'll follow that guy to the end of the earth. Well, let's follow Jesus to heaven. Amen. It's a greater place. And if we believe that, the Lord has spoken Peter as he preached. Acts 2, 37, they asked, what shall we do? He says, repent and be baptized. You know, his mind could have easily grabbed and said, man, they're not going to want to do this. This some man. This, some of them already got baptized by John. Oh, this is going to be some mess. But he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises to you, your children, and all that are fault. Even as many as the Lord I go, I shall call. And with many other words, he testified and encouraged them. Save yourself from this unto all that is perverted generation. Then they that gladly receive his word were baptized the same day. Three thousand souls added unto them. And they continue steadfast in the apostle doctrine. The fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. And the Lord added to the church daily. Such should be saved. Acts 2 and 47. It's worth the battle, brethren. It's worth the battle. Believe me. It's worth the battle. And you've done it enough to know. Don't give up. Let your soul be confirmed. Let it be stabilized. And let it be exhorted to reach out for one more. Don't forget the saints, though. Sometimes we're so anxious, which we want to save the world. But we got saints that are falling off the tree. So we want to save them too. And that's why if you notice, they went back to the churches and confirmed those souls that were already in and encouraged them to continue in the faith. Not just to baptize again, which is also our number one priority, get a soul in, but also the saint is equal. That's in, that's failing. And sometimes that saint kind of gets lost. You ever notice how a person has a child and have a new baby? Everybody love the new baby. All oh, the new baby smell good. You know, it smells like powder and boy, little cheeks. And you kiss a little hair, her hair so soft. And the other baby had a nappy. Now, God help the child to, not to be disliked. The child, her heart to call the other baby, just brush their hand. Everybody love, you know, put them to see if they see. This one coming now. Can you play with me? You know, you forgot they still need to be played with. Are they three, four, five, or six, you know? You know, you tired, but you crawl over there anyway because you can't forget them. Because they start to calculate, I'm forgotten because of this new one that's in the house. I don't like them. All the two people, that's my parents. We don't want the church to be like that. We cannot be so aggressive and going to evangelize and forget, hey, what about the children that are already in? Yeah, they may be hard to comb out all that air that they have, but they're to be loved too. And we can't forget them. So let's remember that brethren. The Lord won't forget them. And that's, let, let us not have to make him hustle up. To go find somebody else. That can nurture them as well. The scriptures tell us that the eunuch wanted to be saved. But Philip had to instruct him. So where well, you got to think. With all your heart. He says I believe Jesus Christ the son of God. And then he baptizes him. Paul said, by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Gentile, born or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Peter says it's saved. 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22. The life figure, even baptism, now saves us. Don't worry about the thief on the cross. N-O-W takes care of him. Not the pudding, wait, of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who's gone in heaven. At God's right hand, all angels, authority, powers. Are subject unto him. People get so excited. Man you know. He knows the president. You know Jesus. My goodness. That's even greater. And he knows you. That's even more. Like Paul said. Rather are known of God. That's the key. You believe that. Jesus said in Revelation 2.10. The devil will cast some of you into prison. He says be faithful unto death. Tribulation will be there. Ten days. They'll check you. Stay faithful. And God will be with you. If you're here, you want to get baptized or listen to the CD. We say that all the time. There, and but see, we gotta understand. Some people don't never call us. They call someone else in there. They know how to find Church of Christ in there, and then they get baptized. The Lord is always working, but your voice will not fall on deaf ears. It will have its effect. Trust the Lord. Do the work. Love the Lord. Love the saints. Love yourself. 
And God will reward you at the end. Believe it. He will reward. It says be faithful unto death. If you're here though, you're a member of the church. We say we're not going to forget the saints. That's why we don't. What are you discouraged about? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Ask the saints to pray with you. Don't discredit us. We can talk to God together. Somebody going to get the brain in. Just don't give up. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to talk about I need help. I need prayer. Brethren, God loves you. He wants the problem fixed. You know, we go to the doctor. We tell him some deep, dark series about us. Don't tell the doctor all kind of private information about us. Makes us disrobe. My God, he know, he know what's wrong with you before your family even knows. But we won't tell the saints we need help. Why? Don't be that way. Come out while together we stand and sing Heaven's Invitation. Fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us haste away.